Welcome to our second monthly news update. For those not familiar with the format, it's going to be super rough, quick and unpolished. But we're trying to find a way to keep you guys updated without losing too much time on shooting video and editing. So if you're looking for a pretty video, skip this one and watch something else. All right, this month started off doing a lot of experiments and tryouts with plastic as a material trying to push the boundaries and see what else is possible using different techniques or more handcraft, trying to make more valuable stuff with it. And Matthijs joined us to do a big research on plastic. Hello Matthijs. Hi. Could you tell us a bit about what you're doing? Yeah, I'm doing research about color blending and also translucency. Ooh. So for instance, I try to make hard lines with two colors uh, and this one. But it's uh, pretty hard to make a straight, nice line with uh, small flakes. And about translucency, I made those blocks. Those are made from uh, CD boxes. And it sounds a bit like glass, and you can also see through quite nice. Those are made mainly from the DVD or video boxes. Those are a bit translucent, but less than the CD box. And this is made from uh, shampoo bottles and also milk bottles and this is not translucent at all and for fun I also mold a lot of toys together um, yeah it gives this nice party block with some nice details like a head of a toy still seeable to the Playmobil guy yeah I think a cheap one <laughs> that's about it all right thank you very much then I will see you next time that's good <laughs> So this whole research and everything we learn, we share open source online in our forums. And it's being updated regularly, so check it out if you're interested. It might be a good inspiration if you work with plastic to see what else is possible with it. Now we also wanted a place where we can store all our best experiments. So the stuff we think of all the things we try out is really valuable and worth exploring more. So we made our own precious plastic museum. <laughs> It's basically just a corner in the workspace painted white with some nice shelf where we can highlight our most important experiments. But it's a good way for us to see value in that and try to focus on the important details. And in order to keep you guys updated digitally, we also started an Instagram account called Real Precious Plastic, trying to show the beauty of plastic. So meanwhile, we're doing a lot of experiments here in the workspace and I went together with Parley to the Maldives to see if we can do something about the plastic problem in the oceans there. And I don't want to talk about it too much because I shot some footage and the Maldives looks pretty good. So it's probably better to have a look at that. Lesson one, working with plastic, always bring your own bottle. Hello. It's insane how much stuff there is around. So we're currently doing a beach cleanup. Here is all the stuff we collected now being sorted out. And it's as always a lot of it. Also pretty. So here's all the stuff we sort out. A lot of bottles. And we're looking to see if we can implement pressure plastic on one of these islands. So that's actually the pilot what we're looking into. Um, and the idea is if we can make it work there, we can easily scale it to all these other little islands as well. Because basically they all have plastic pollution floating in uh, their beaches, but they don't really know what to do with it. So Besides looking at ways how to recycle plastic from the ocean, 
We also had a lot of brainstorm sessions and chats and workshops on how to make sure plastic doesn't enter the ocean in the first place. Because there were many people from around the world sharing their knowledge. Which means we also had a lot of talks and Skypes just to share all the information we have together to come up with a solution. And I really like to Skype with this Santa Claus looking guy. He's actually one of the founders of Greenpeace and now running Sea Shepherd, the boat that goes before boats that are illegally fishing on wheels and stuff like that. Super inspiring guy doing a lot of incredible stuff. And right that evening we also saw his documentary, How to Change the World. It's basically how Greenpeace got started. It's interesting to see. Which brings me to the next point. I started a topic in our forum sharing all my top documentaries I've watched over the years. I would highly recommend watching them as well. And if you have a good tip for me, please leave a reply and I'll have a look at it. And back from the Maldives, I started working on new story hopper videos. But these ones are a bit different. They're pretty tough, big and complex, addressing more global systematic problems. They're pretty, pretty difficult to make. Um, the first one is called the dark side of data. Now, I never ask you guys to share a story hopper video, but once these are ready and out, I would really appreciate it and the videos really need to be shared. So stay tuned for that. Now, these are all the things we've done this month, but also a lot of stuff happened in our online community. So here we have community news. <laughs> So first off, we have these coasters made in Thailand by Boop Shop. Hi everyone, I'm Tui Hit Yang from Chiang Mai, Thailand. This and is my studio. The, he's selling them as a souvenir to tourists, but he's been pretty good in mastering the skill of coloring the plastic. So he has all this super nice, spacey gradients and blends in here. And they feel really sturdy. It's almost like a piece of marble. It's nice. Thanks for sending us. We got Nine Iron in the USA, who made a hand-powered version of our shredder with a huge hopper. Looks interesting. Limpy and Curaçao made a nice video about their whole project, trying to create awareness and educate people around them so they can start recycling plastic more on the little island where they are. Have a look at this post in the forums below to understand their project a bit more. And then there's a project called Dirk from Belgium. It's an experimental workshop where they shred old products and turn it into something new on the spot. But they made this nice compact version of our shredder with a bucket underneath that shreds super tiny amounts. But I like the fact that if you shred something, even a small amount of flakes is valuable and can turn it into something new. And they also made a nice video about it, which you can watch in the link below. And then we got a message in our online community from Ani0555 a member uh, of the community that was visiting India in super remote areas, and then he randomly stumbled upon an injection machine. He just saw it somewhere and he recognized it. So we asked around who built it, and it was a few girls from a school there that built the machine. So he was like, why don't you share back a picture or something like that? But they were kind of shy and they weren't sure the machine was good enough. So he did a post in our community on behalf of them and I, I think that's still what really amazes me, that even though we not always get a picture back, it's good to know that even in the most remote areas of the world, people start recycling plastic. So don't be shy, just share your pictures. But either way, thank you uh, for sending that post to us, Ani0555. So that's it for this month's updates. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope to see you again next month. And Thanks again for everyone that is supporting on Patreon. It, it really, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do all of this. So thank you very much and we'll see you next month.